What's going on, guys? We are talking... <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, guys? Uh, we're going to make a quick little video explaining game theory, one situation, which is the pirate situation of game theory. So in life, we have all these choices, right? And you never know which one to pick. Game theory basically helps you to process different scenarios and you pick the best one, the optimal scenario for you. So this pirate example, what's happened is you guys took a bunch of gold, it's on your ship, and you're like, whoa, that's a lot of gold. How are we going to distribute this throughout our crew? Now you're this Banff looking dude, the only guy with the two pack out of the crew, and uh, you know, you got your pirate hat and your eye patch, so you're pretty legit. Your top dog. You have seniority, and your right hand man is this dude right here, looking kind of weird. And then uh, the next in line would be this guy wearing a red thing. Um, and then you got him. And then lastly, this crippled dude, which you know he's probably not gonna get any gold if you just look at him. That doesn't look like a guy that would get any gold. But that's the scenario. Now you as captain, you have to distribute this money. But the thing is, if the majority of the crew doesn't like the way that you distributed the money, what's going to happen is you're no longer going to be a captain because you have to walk the plank. You're going to be like, whoa, man. Ah, and then the shark's going to eat you. So you want to make sure your crew's happy with your decision, but you also want to get the most gold because you have the responsibility. Now, what happens if, if you do go into the ocean, your next buddy over here, he becomes the captain and he has to distribute the money for his crew which is only four people and again if the majority doesn't like his decision he's going in the ocean too and then obviously this dude is going to be captain he's got to make the choice and uh, so forth so obviously you want to live right you don't want to be in the ocean with this shark because he's looking looking pretty hungry so what you got to do is you got to distribute the gold so again the cripple doesn't get any money well he could you know you just don't want him to be captain because he's probably going to crash the ship and then there's going to be buried gold in the ocean. So just take a moment and think of how you would distribute the money as captain, how I had it first set up. You got five crew members. Let's say there's 100 gold pieces in here. Think about how you're going to distribute that money. You know, leave a comment or a guess or just think about it. And then, uh, then you know, pause the video maybe and grab a latte, think about it, and then come back and watch the rest of the video and we'll kind of rationalize game theory and the different choices that we can make. So now that you're back after that latte, this is how it's going to work. We're going to rationalize backwards, say that everyone else that was captain distributed the money and the rest of the crew didn't like it and they threw him in the ocean. So the crippled guy wins here because he's going to be like, yo man, I'm going to take all that gold. You know, he's going to get it all. But the thing is, this scenario is never going to happen. But let's just say happenstance, it did happen. So our fifth crew member will have all 100 pieces of gold and he's pretty happy and, you know, because he didn't expect to get anything out of his life and now he has all this gold! He gets all that coin, right? So, but the thing is, that's never going to happen because, again, majority vote votes <laughs> off uh, the, the current captain. So we're going to bring back because we're going backwards in time when this dude's the captain and he's going to be like, hey, I'm going to take all that gold. And Crippled Kid, you aren't going to get any. And even if the Crippled Kid's like, nah, I don't agree to that, that's not a majority vote. So now the scenario is, let me see, we're going to put 100 above him and we're going to go back to the Crippled and put zero in this scenario. So obviously the Crippled is never going to be captain. So that kind of sucks for him. But again, it doesn't really matter after us as the original captain is in the ocean right now. We're trying to figure out what decision we need to make so our crew's happy and we don't die. So um, again, we're just working backwards and this would be this situation. If this guy was captain, he'd take all the gold. This guy would probably not like that, but he can't really throw him in the ocean. All right, so again, we're doing backwards induction here. So we're gonna bring this guy back from the grave and now there's two other crew members and he's the captain. So now he's going to decide what he needs to do. So for this captain, his main objective is to get one person to say, hey, I'm, I'm good with that distribution and he's safe and he gets all the money. So again, we're going to analyze the crippled kid because right now the 100 scenario, like I said, that's never going to happen. So he's only looking forward to zero pieces of gold 
this guy potentially could get 100 pieces if he kicks off this now captain. So this guy's hoping that uh, the captain goes away because then he'll get 100 pieces of gold. But uh, the bandana captain, he's like, I'm not cool with that. I'm not cool with you wanting to push me off into that shark water. All right, that's just not something I'm down for. But Crippled Kid, I'm going to give you one piece of gold because otherwise you're not going to get any. So you probably should just be happy with what I give you. And you, you're a douchebag, so I'm going to give you zero. And I'm going to take the rest of the gold, which is 99. And so that would be the best scenario for this dude because he's going to get most of the gold and he's not going to get kicked off and die because the Crippled Kid's got his back. He's like, what's up, homie? Got your back. So that would be his optimal scenario. Gets most of the gold. Crippled Dude's pretty happy because he's like, I didn't expect to get any gold. This is neat. So we're going to bring back this creepy looking dude. And he's now captain. So he wants to be pretty cool and, uh, you know, happy and not die. And he also wants to get a lot of gold. So what he's going to do is he wants one of these people to vote for him. And uh, whether they do or not, that's cool. He could probably pick a couple different scenarios. This guy's future isn't looking too pretty because if this guy becomes captain, most likely, again, he is not going to get any gold because this ca this guy thinks he's a douchebag. So what our creepy captain's going to do is give him one coin and give these guys zero because he doesn't really care because, again, if two people vote against him, that's not a majority vote. And uh, he's going to take the rest, 99, for himself. So that's pretty awesome. So you can kind of see how this works. He could have probably give the crippled dude one coin as well because the crippled dude would be like, okay, I didn't expect to get any gold. I'll, I'll vote for you. Um, and that could have worked out too because he's still going to get 99. But most likely he wants to favor the interest of this guy because he's looking at zero coming up. Whereas the cripple would be like, okay, I could get one either way. doesn't really matter to me. Um, so that's that scenario. And then lastly, what our original choice was is us as captain looking pretty fly um, for a pirate and uh, what we want to do. So again, we want the most gold. We don't want to die. So what we're going to do is we're going to relate to the third third person, which is looking again for zero gold um, in his f near future and also the crippled in his near future because we care about the cripples, guys. We, you know, we try to support them, help them out, give them a coin every once in a while when we're going to take a lot more than a coin. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to give the other two zero because we can. Because we have the majority vote. We got this guy on our back because he's probably going to get zero here. And we also got this cripple guy on our back because he's got zero. Or he's going to get zero. And that would be the majority vote. We can take 98 coins would be the distribution that we potentially could have in game theory. Now, most likely, all your other pirates aren't going to have the brain power to think about you know the scenarios and how they're going to play out. So you might want to just give everyone a little bit more just to be safe and you aren't next to this shark down here. But that's kind of how game theory works. You want to like look through all the different scenarios in life. It can it can apply to anything, any situation, a job interview. You know, you can say, hey, if I ask for this much. How is this guy going to react? You can work you can work through different situations and think about all the different outcomes that could uh, play part, and you also want to have the optimal choice for yourself. Um, it kind of sounds selfish, but it's uh, you know, a smart way to think and uh, you know try and play through some different scenarios throughout your day-to-day -day and see how that works out for you. If you see a homeless person today, you can just drop him a gold piece and be like, What up? I'm a pirate! And, uh, you know, things are going to play out for you. So, anyways, uh, I don't know if that video kind of confused you or not, but it's all about optimizing your choices and making the life that you want to have um, by those choices and those decisions that you make. So, thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll catch you later. Peace. That sounds too formal. <laughs>